Thank you for the, this invitation, especially from Professor Reinhardt. Thank you so much. I am very happy to explain what is the situation of the sepsis in the world. We published first paper in 2016, and we announced that there are 11 million deaths due to the sepsis. Now, I will present result from 2007, 2019 that a little number is different. Then let me very fast go through the process. Okay, just be clarified that everybody die one time, not two time. This is a very important. Everybody die with one cause not two cars. And these cars have to be underlying cars. What is the underlying cause? The causes that start a chain of deaths. For example, a stroke, road traffic accident. These are underlying cars. And after underlying cars, there are a lot of intermediate causes, like pulmonary embolism, like sepsis, like heart failure, like acute respiratory failure, acu acute kidney failure. These are intermediate causes. And countries, we have every, we have every year 56 million deaths, 50, around between, some, some year is different. From these 50 million deaths, 25 million deaths comes by the vital registration from the country. And all of the country announced one cause as an underlying cause. That is uh, causes that, as I said, it is underlying cause. Nobody doesn't say that sepsis is a cause of deaths. Or if they say, they are wrong because sepsis is intermediate cause. Except of the some country, handful of the country, they announce multiple causes of deaths. It is around six, seven country, US, Brazil, Mexico, New Zealand, Colombia, and some other country that they publish individual record. Then we can follow sepsis happened or not. I, I think that you, all, all, all of you know this. This is a standard death certificate. And the, in the standard death certificate, you can see that deaths started from underlying cause. And then move to the intermediate cause, intermediate cause, intermediate cause, and immediate cause. Then we, for the, following sepsis, following pulmonary embolism, following acute respiratory uh, failure, we have to follow the deaths, follow the underlying deaths and chain of deaths. For the sepsis, we have this definition. I am sure that you know much better than me this definition. We clarified in the process, based on, the, again, your knowledge, we clarified two type of sepsis, explicit sepsis and implicit sepsis. And we look to the multiple causes of this. This is just an example. You can see this is real multiple causes of deaths. Everything that is in the yellow, it is underlying cause. And when we follow, we will see that in some causes, the sepsis did not happen. In some causes, explicit sepsis and implicit sepsis happened. Let me explain one, one thing. Technical detail of the, for example, ICD coding and other, because it is long, 
I put in the end of the, my presentation. Then anybody can look to the detail in the website. Okay. How we calculate sepsis? Number of deaths due to the sepsis. First, we use multiple causes of deaths. We map multiple causes of deaths to the different chain of deaths and underlying cause to the different causes. Then we calculate how many percent of the people with the different causes by age, sex, location die by sepsis. And then run a model, SDGPR, and then we calculate number of the sepsis by the country. It is, this was very fast, I know, but it is detail. I don't go through the detail. This is input data. This is how we calculated fraction of the sepsis. You can go come back to look. This is how we run SDGPR to get a uh, number of the sepsis by the different location time six. And this is the result. I, I moved this part very fast. It was technical, but anyway, we can discuss about that. Instead of the 11 million deaths that we announced in the 2000, 16 that it was happened, published in the 2017, we have 13.7 million deaths due to the sepsis. In the past, we said 11 million. Why it's changed? Because we included some, inf some implicit sepsis that we didn't include in the past, same as tuberculosis, same as based on the, your definition, any organ failure with the infectious disease can be causes of sepsis. Then we included HIV, we included TB, we included diarrhea. And uh, we calculated that uh, these 37 million deaths is deaths with sepsis, not due sepsis. I, I will be happy to clarify one discussion. Sepsis is not underlying cause. Sepsis is intermediate cause. People with the, some underlying cause die with sepsis as the associated deaths, not as the underlying deaths. Same as heart failure, same as pulmonary embolism. And from this 13.7, 5 million die with the non-communicable disease. For example, somebody had uh, a stroke, somebody had cirrhosis, and die with the sepsis. And from these, 3 million die with the, uh, in the children. Look to this. I will be happy to answer any question. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Okay. Look to this. This is implicit and explicit sepsis from 1990 until 2019. 2019, it's a mistake, to 2017. As you see, that explicit sepsis is going down. Implicit sepsis, no. And this is real. Look to this. This is number of deaths in the different super region of the world. Highest number with the explicit sepsis, with the infectious disease, this, this graph shows how many deaths, how many sepsis deaths happened in the infectious disease, in the non-communicable disease, in the injury. You can see, it's by the developing the country, by the start from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, come to the high income, you can see explicit deaths, sorry, deaths in the infectious syndrome increase, decrease, and deaths in the non-communicable disease with sepsis increased. All is with sepsis. This is one other shape that you can see. 
This is from 1990 until 2019. You can see, again, deaths with sepsis for the different infectious diseases is increasing, is decreasing. But all other non-communicable deaths with sepsis is increasing. And I think that uh, it makes sense. Okay, this is pattern by age in the different year. You can see that under five mortality with the different, due to the different causes, with sepsis is decreasing. Same as these for the five to 14. For the 15 to 15 increased and decreased. The real cause of increasing was HIV. In this time, you can see in the around 2000 until 2010, it was peak of a, a HIV epidemic. And then decreased. But slowly, slowly, you can see that deaths in the old ages for the due to the, with sepsis, due to the different causes, increasing. And again, it makes sense because people go have a stroke, ischemic heart disease, go to the hospital. For the different reason, they get sepsis and they die. This is distribution by the country. And again, you can see highest problem is in the poor country, Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and some area in the Latin America has the big number of the deaths with sepsis. And this is some other looking to the sepsis that we match SDI, SDI definition is here, sociodemographic index that we made, and it shows that sepsis with the increasing SDI, with the better going to the going better uh, sociodemographic index, it will decrease. Okay, now in 2019, we add one other step to our estimation that we published in 2017 in Lancet that, okay, have to be a bridge between underlying cause and sepsis. Because a stroke cannot make a sepsis. Maybe when you use, when we use catheter, when we use some, when this person for the long time will be in the bed, then get bed sore, then get infectious, skin infectious disease, then go to the sepsis, then get UTI, then go to the sepsis. Then have to be some bridge map between underlying cause and sepsis. We name this bridge map as an infectious syndrome. And here you can see the list of the infectious syndrome, sorry, Li list of infectious syndrome that are between underlying cause and sepsis. The biggest one is lower respiratory infections. Second one is bloodstream infections. It is different with the old word that we said, septicemia. Diarrhea, peritonitis, and uh, skin infections, UTI. And here you can see distribution of the infectious syndrome in the different age group that happened that make sepsis. What is the benefit of that? This is a very good indicator that this guy is going to the sepsis. 
Be careful. Esteroc with UTI is the best candidate for the going to the sepsis. Ischemic heart disease with the lower respiratory infections or cirrhosis with the peritonitis, it is a very good candidate that will go to the sepsis. Be careful. Here is very summary we, we have for the every causes. You can see here what happened. A stroke, if you look to the here, we have 6 million, 6.5 million deaths due to the sep due to the, uh, a stroke. From these 6.5 million, 9 percent, around 600,000, die with sepsis. When they die with sepsis, these are bridge map. These are, sorry, these are bridge causes or infectious syndrome. Some go to the BSI, some go to the uh, is very sensitive. Uh, some go to the lower respiratory. This is cirrhosis. 1.4 million people die by cirrhosis, but 42% die with sepsis, with peritonitis. Peritonitis then, then go to the sepsis. And same as this COPD. Okay, we, we publish our results. We published in Lancet, we used sepsis estimation for the antimicrobial resistance uh, that we published in Lancet in January 2022. And what is the next for us? We are trying to calculate sepsis every year, almost. We are working to the calculation of the sepsis with COVID that happened from 2020, 2021, and 2022. First result shows that our number will be around more than 14 million deaths with sepsis. We use sepsis as an envelope for the, for the antimicrobial resistance. And the last thing that I want to say, everything that we estimate it will be public good, and it is in the internet. We have our website, all of the things, it will be internet, and everybody can get by country, age, sex, year. For the sepsis and for the AMR, our VIS tool will launch in the World Health uh, Summit in October in Germany, and everybody can look to that. Thank you so much.